Hi, team, for your listening enjoyment. We have the one and only Ann Coulter joining us now. She is the author of not one, not two, not three, 13, in fact, New York Times bestsellers, uh, of which I have actually read all of them, so that's always kind of fun. And thank you so much for joining us. Great to talk to you, Buck Sexton. You're one of my favorite people on Twitter. Thank you so much. Um, these days, it's uh, it's kind of lonely when you point point things out on Twitter about how the so-called experts. I, I've I've just been asking the question, not just on Twitter, but also of other doctors I know. What exactly do these people know who are making the calls? And behind closed doors, other brilliant doctors will in fact tell you they really don't know very much. What do you make of all this, Ed? <laughs> Yes, and this is obviously not a scientific sample, but um, I do have a lot of doctor friends, and they don't even know one another, um, both in L.A. and New York. And I've noticed that by and large, (laughs) um, in fact, 100% of my doctor friends are... um, think that the reaction is somewhat exaggerated and all of my non-doctor friends are freaking out scaredy cats <laughs> yeah no i'm well i'm saying are you i'm ask are, which state are you in during this lockdown uh, mostly california new york is unlivable yeah new york is where i am and it's it's rough here right now so at least california is, is doing better with this but l- let me ask you about how Trump is handling this whole thing, you know, you, you, you've been somebody who uh, early on, everyone knows, early on you said that Trump had something special. I'll never forget the Bill Maher, uh, the, the Bill Maher call that you made about how he was the most likely one to win, and that, now you've had criticism for Trump when he's messed up on things. How's he doing now on this? That's a really good question. Um, it was funny, early yesterday I was thinking to myself, Um, You know, I'm always making fun of these 3D chess people, but it looks like Trump is actually pulling it off here. He wants to open the country, doesn't want to get blamed for it. Um, And right now he's in a situation where the media is demanding that he open the country and saying he's dragging his feet. And this economic catastrophe is entirely on him. And, oh, we'll have to turn to the governors. And I thought, genius, that's how we reopen the country. I mean, however it's done, I assume, you know, bit by bit. Some industries, um, until there's either a vaccine or enough testing to show that it's not as transmissible as believed, which is possible. We really, we, that's among the crucial data we don't have yet. And then, man, this guy is easy to play. You could get Donald Trump to admit to participation in, in a crime by saying, no, you just drive, drove the getaway car, right? Nope, nope, I shot the 7-Eleven clerk. That was me. I mean, he did it with the Russia investigation. You will remember that. He goes through this whole procedure of getting, um, what's his name, Rod Rosenstein to write that letter saying we're getting rid of of James Comey because um, um, we think he made a lot of mistakes in that in the Hillary investigation and announcing it was back on and then annou- announcing it was off and this that and the other thing. Um, so we're going to we we request that the FBI director be fired and then Donald Trump everything's great it's going fine and then Donald Trump goes on Lester Holt and says oh no no that was my decision I decided to do it anyway yeah it was because of this Russia stuff. Um, yeah he has and- a, he has an alpha to omega complex sometimes. That comes out. And that's exactly what happened at the press conference. I mean, there were many great moments at the press conference. I love the aggressive Trump. Um, I would have put together a much better video, but it was okay. I liked him doing a video. I think he should do videos at all his press conferences. I love him being aggressive with these swine reporters who aren't reporters at all. They're, they're sort of like the liberals who show up at my college speeches, hectoring him. We're, we're not getting any news out of this. They're trying to become stars. Um, but... But, <laughs> yet and still, oh, they know how to manipulate him. Um, say, well, you don't have the authority to, to reopen the country. And what does he do? I have total authority to reopen the country. And by the way, my complaint here is not that he said something that is not technically constitutionally true. I mean, I understood what he meant. He clarified it within the confines of the press conference he's talking about in the context of a viral pandemic like this. Of course he has all sorts of of methods to to, um, decide whether the country is going to be reopened. Fine, if the state doesn't want to reopen, he can say, well, then you're not going to get any of this of this 
this recovery money. So I, I, I mean, think there are all sorts of things he can do. That's not what I'm complaining about. What I'm complaining about is he had just he had just eased with no no effort on his own. The media had moved the decision of when and how to reopen the country off of President Trump and on to the governors. And no, they manipulate him into grabbing it right back. Well, this is my my point is that they don't they they don't know. I think I think the press can't decide what the better situation is for bashing Trump because on on, on, on the one hand, you know they they want him to be you know they they don't want to admit that he's had a big role in this because what if by the way the reopening goes pretty well right what if, what if right. he pushes for a reopening and and it's not as bad as people said and he has and now it looks like there'll be this big rise from the polls but on the other hand if they allow the governors to do this. Well, if there's a catastrophe in one state or another, it was on the governor, right? So they don't know what they're rooting for. I think that's what you see in that press room. Um, they're not. They're going to bash him. You were one hundred percent right. No matter what he does, <laughs> they're hysterical. He doesn't shut down um, the country earlier, and which is absurd. But um, then he does it, and they blame him for the results of the shutdown. Now they're saying reopen. He says, "I have the authority to reopen." No, you don't have the authority. To so it's true that whatever he does, um, they are going to say it's his fault, he did the wrong thing, he's a monster, an authoritarian. True, true, true. All that is true. Yet and still, he was in the position yesterday morning <laughs> of, of, of getting this, this off his plate. And it is, as you say, a Hobson's choice. Thing, bad things are happening right now with the government shutdown, but it, it, whomever, whenever it gets reopened, every coronavirus death is going to be blamed on the politician who reopened the, the government. It doesn't matter how many lives were saved because the government, because we were allowed to go out and get fresh air and go to the beach and um, and businesses don't go under and families aren't 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 going and, and family businesses and small businesses aren't going bankrupt. Those. Those horrors and and deaths will not count. Only the coronavirus death will count. So you don't want to be the politician in the in in the position of being the one to make the decision. As of yesterday morning, through no effort on his own, <laughs> the media had politely moved that office plate, as you say, just to harangue him. So why did he take it back for himself? Now it's a, now it's him again. Yeah, I, th I think it was a mistake. I think you got to let the, I think letting the governors lead it and him backstopping, which is actually really from a federalism perspective, I think what should kind of happen. Uh, but that's a whole other and from a medical perspective. Yeah, of I mean, course. A lot of these states, the ones that are being browbeaten by CNN and MSNBC, who have not um, gone through the you know full stay home, don't get fresh air, don't exercise, stay home, and transmit viruses to one another. Um, they, they're they're actually doing quite well. Different states are different. Yeah. Rural communities are different from cities. Places with public transportation. I think public transportation. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not a doctor, but gosh, it sure seems noticeable. In addition to things like spring break and Mardi Gras, one major transmission vector appears to be things like subways. Yes, and, and another thing that has been left out of this, and I don't know if you've had this uh, this experience yet, Anne, but I keep seeing things that are written, at least purportedly, by by doctors, uh, medium posts, and other things that will pop up where doctors are theorizing or say anything that's that's against the the consensus right now, which the consensus changes about this week to week. You know, masks being the best example. Like masks were not necessary, then they were necessary, then we need them. So so it's interesting to see that consensus shuts people down. Uh, but I see things that get pulled off the internet, and two of the areas that I believe we're going to find out were really just overlooked in the panic to do the maximum here. You mentioned uh, you know from the transmission at home. In familial transmission, particularly in New York, we're going to we're already seeing some of the data, and the governor has mentioned this, but he doesn't want to get into it. That's been terrible, but also nosocomial infection in, inside the hospitals, telling everybody to yes. show up to a hospital and get tested. This was a terrible idea. Yes, yes, and and also to keep them in the hospital. I mean, much like a politician deciding whether to reopen, a doctor in an emergency room has to decide if somebody comes in showing, you know, symptoms of flash, um, you know, Chinese virus, flu, um, pneumonia, um, what, what's he going to do? You're going to give him a hospital bed. 
um, you'd be mad not to give them a hospital bed. Whereas during normal times, they might say, okay, we're taking the test. We're sending you home with this with this oxygen breather and, and I don't know, Tamiflu, um, and we'll give you a call in a couple of days. Yeah, get them out of the hospital. Yeah. That, that would be the better thing to do, but you, can you imagine doing it now? What if the person goes home and dies? Yeah, be, be, before, before COVID-19, and I, I've been saying this on my show just so people can really know that it's an important statistic, 80 to 100,000 people every year die from, a, from an infection that they, want, that they got in the hospital. That's a lot of people, so you know yeah. it's, it's, it's worth worth yeah, noting. It's like the old, um, you know, the the John Lott point on on guns. <laughs> Liberals always say, um, you know, um, people who own guns are more likely to be shot in their own neighborhoods. Um, well, I think that's why they have the gun. Right. <laughs> Living in bad neighborhoods, it's like saying more people die in hospitals. Don't go to a hospital; you'll die there. <laughs> So, we, guys, I want to come back with Ann and ask her some political questions, because it turns out Barack Obama does have an endorsement to make. We'll get into that in just a second. Coulter, a uh, 13-time New York Times best-selling author, fierce on the Twitter, but actually quite delightful and entertaining in person. Uh, and thanks for staying with us. So, Absolutely. Love to be here. So, uh, Joe Biden is the nominee. Uh, this is a prediction that I have to admit to my audience I got wrong. I can't believe that he's actually the nominee in a sense. It just strikes me as it, it does seem like almost elder abuse. Obama's giving the last man standing in the candidate you know, in, in the race, uh, <laughs> You know, yeah, go for Joe Biden today. What do you make of this? Yeah, that was kind of ringing endorsement. Okay, fine, I'll endorse you. <laughs> hey, but no can he can he win? And it's, can he beat him? He waited even for Sanders to drop out. It's it's really not not an overwhelming endorsement. Can he win? Well, um, I do think this coronavirus business. A lot of people think, oh, he looks so old, and he has these stupid podcasts. No, this is the best thing that could happen to Joe Biden. I, I have said for a long time the Democrats could beat Trump if they, if they could possibly run a candidate and not tell us who the candidate is. <laughs> Just not Trump. You got two choices when you walk into the voting booth, Trump or not Trump. And I think a lot of people are just exhausted, whether it's Trump's fault or not. They're exhausted with having a, this constant chaos and frenzy and anger and every night it's breaking. Oh, what did he do today? And I think people, not people like you and me, but people who are kind of on the fence are just going to think, okay, fine, where do I sign the contract? Just make all this chaos stop. Um, so you have that, and also we're not really seeing what you, I think, accurately describe as the elder abuse of running this guy, the less you see of him, the better off the Democrats are. Um, and then there's also the risk, I mean, if Trump, um, I know I'm getting to be a broken record on this, but if Trump had, had gone in and kept his promises on going tough against China, on bringing manufacturing home, on, on, on building the wall, and, and, you know, pretty much locking down the borders, Oh, he'd be sitting pretty right now. But he didn't do that. He says that stuff, and he's tricked Democrats into opposing reasonable policies that, that 80% of the country agree with. I don't know if you saw um, this recent poll that 80% of Americans want a total immigration moratorium. I mean, that's only slightly up from what it was when he was elected and throughout his presidency. Why have we not gotten the immigration moratorium? I mean, I'm sorry, this, this virus came from China. Um, and the media's response is, oh, don't call it the Chinese virus. Um, and we're not getting a wall either. Are you right? Exactly. But I've gone from being, you know, the one person I knew who, who thought Trump was going to win to saying, 
I don't know. Yeah, I know. It's, it seems like also the, the, the Democrats, you know, orange man bad slash return to normalcy was the main, that was the overriding narrative that you got. You know, Trump is, all the things they always say, he's so gross and evil and bad. But, you know, for people that don't already feel that way, it seemed like that wasn't really going to move the needle. But return to normalcy, to your point, if normalcy means you can go back outside and live your life again, and if that yeah. just becomes the perception, then a return to normalcy pre-Trump. You know, it used to be normalcy was a booming stock market, peace and prosperity in America. doesn't feel like that right now. I think Democrats have something they're, they're going to use. Oh, absolutely. And this is not a statement of preference. I mean, it's, it's terrifying that whomever the Democrat is, um, if the Democrat wins the presidential election, it'll be about the same. I mean, we think there's this huge difference. People who pay attention and watch the debate, huge difference between Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders. Uh, they're going to hire the same people. You're going to get the same Supreme Court nominee. Poor Ruth Bader Ginsburg can finally can finally retire. Um, any Democrat will absolutely fling open the borders um, <laughs> quite a bit more than than Trump merely not keeping his promises on the border. Um, so so it, this is not said with any good cheer. <laughs> but I, as I always say, I consider myself the president of the reelect Trump committee by trying to get this guy to keep his promises because that's the best way for him to get reelected. This coronavirus, though, I think is helping Biden. And however things shake out, I mean, people do have a tendency. Again, not you or me. They have a tendency to blame the president when things aren't going well. And it's hard to see a lot of things bouncing back. I think we could open most of the country, but how are you going to open, um, well, one of my favorite things to do, um, you know, professional baseball games? How are you going to open Disneyland? Movie theaters? Are people going to be comfortable flying? I yeah, the, to the whole service industry is still, th that's yeah. months and months and months off, and that employs one-tenth of Americans, so that's a big problem. But, and before we, uh, we let you go and, and, and get into our next break here, one, corona, I mean, one uh, quarantine recommendation from Ann Coulter of what to watch. I read, obviously, one of your books. What to watch. What are you watching these days? Oh, I just thought of a good one that I should be recommending to people. What was it? Um, well, I loved Veep. Okay. I haven't seen that one. We'll check that one out. Really? That TV show? I haven't seen it, yeah. It's with Elaine from Seinfeld, and what's, I think you'll really like it, but I think anybody would like it, because even though it's about a vice president, there's nothing political about it. It's just utterly cynical about politics, quite accurate in that regard, in fact, Sounds and very funny. Sounds fantastic. All right, everybody, Ann Coulter, if you haven't already, get one of her books, get a bunch of her books, and stay safe. Thanks so much for making the time for us. Good to talk to you, Buck. Bye-bye. If you haven't switched to Pure Talk, you're probably paying too much for your cell service. Pure Talk USA is located here in America, but their customer service is also here in America. So whenever you call, you're going to get somebody who is going to be able to help you work through your problems with ease. Any questions, any concerns, any assistance you need. Plus, the CEO and chairman is a U.S. veteran. All plans include unlimited talk, text, and data. You can choose how much high-speed data you need, unlike many other phone providers that only give you one or two plans to choose from. Pure Talk USA has a plan that fits every need. So you can get the same great coverage at half the price of the big carriers. Their network covers 99% of Americans. This is the company that you should call for your cell service. 